Welcome into another edition of the Gigam 24 7 Sport Podcast. I am Andrew Hattersley, joining you on a busy, busy Friday afternoon as AM gears up to host a bunch of portal visitors this weekend. They already have in an important week, and boy, has AM taken advantage on that front with a couple of commitments that we are going to get to in just a few minutes. But wanted to start with the All American Bowl, which will kick off on Saturday afternoon. Practices have been going on throughout the week, and that's where I've been this week, down in San Antonio, where a and has a pair of signees, Asendra Afua and Jordan Pride, taking part in the game. Asendra Afua playing for the West squad, Jordan Pride playing for the East squad. We're going to start with Asendra Afua, who played a little left guard, a little right guard, a little tackle, a little defensive line. And watching him go through drills and practices, I think his stock is certainly rising it started with check-in, I think, and and he checked in at 6'3", 294 pounds, was one of the only players at the game to check in with 11-plus inch hands, which I know really impressed the analysts and scouts that were in attendance uh, for the for the game. And, and uh, you know, once he got out on the field, you could see just how far he's come over the last couple of years, talking with some people that have watched him grow over the last couple of years. And myself, we've... We've seen him in AM camps and and you know when he was, he was up over all over the 300 pound mark, now down to 294. And you can see the difference that it's made. He was really doing an outstanding job pulling to the second level, looked a lot more explosive, but still has that powerful frame, the powerful punch, as I mentioned with his hands. That really showed up and during one-on-ones did really, really well. Won just about all of his reps. The only rep he lost was to Justin Scott, who's a five-star defensive lineman that's heading to Miami. And even then, Afua stayed in front of him. Just the power that Scott has at the at, at the end of the rep kind of ended up winning out and pushing Afua back into the quarterback. But talking to people, you can see with his frame now that he has a chance to go into a college weight room, still add a little bit of good weight, but still keep that explosion, keep that power, and, and really be a... a a good looking interior lineman for Texas a and I think that's where he's going to fit. He he's, he's in the six, three range. So probably not enough length to play tackle, but you could probably put him there in a pinch if you needed to, but came away really impressed with just how he moved, how he, how fluid he was going through drills and, and again, how he could get to the second level. And sounds like things are in a really good fr- place there with, with Texas A&M. Obviously he signed last month with a coaching change, had a chance to talk with him about that as well. And, he just said he's really been able to get to know this this Texas A&M staff and, and and hit the ground running on that front. Obviously, he's got a comfortable presence. He's very close with Mark Naboo. He's been able to bounce questions off, and Naboo played an important part in his recruiting process. But when he's when he's been able to talk to Adam Cushing, he talked about Mike Elko really connecting with him off the field. And Adam Cushing, he said the same. He said he's 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 been able to learn already a lot about Adam Cushing off the field, which he really likes. He's talked a lot about his family, what he likes to do. He's Adam Cushing's a big hunter, so they've talked about that a little bit. And he said he really likes that because it's not just about football for him. It's about all the other aspects and a guy he can really depend on and be able to talk to off the field. So really positive. He'll arrive in the summer, and, and sounds like he is really – ready to hit the ground running when he does arrive in in Aggie land. But as I said, the arrow is pointing up with him. As for Jordan Pride, he's also taking place in this, taking part in this game, playing for the East squad and and had a chance to watch him for a full day going through practices and then see him the next day as well during the team setting. And you know, I thought he was at his best moving around the line of scrimmage, coming downhill. I watched him break up a pass during one-on-ones where he really was able to break on the ball, come downhill. And honestly, the quarterback had to hold the ball and couldn't even get the throw off where I think he can still grow and talking to some other analysts, they, they agreed as well. And in, in the time that they got to watch him in practice is flipping his hips and being able to come out of breaks, obviously missed his junior year because of a knee injury and really wanted to prove this weekend that, that, that he was healthy and that he's full go and, and, and ready to hit the, he'll hit, he'll hit the ground running and and be available in the spring for Texas A&M. He, arrives on campus next week and is also really excited to get going. Said Texas A&M, Texas A&M was where he wanted to be. There was obviously 
<laughs> some adjustment period there during the coaching change, but just said, you know, the way Mike Elko has been in contact with him, said they've been in contact every single day. He's talked with the new defensive staff. He's talked with Jay Bateman and really feels comfortable with the direction that they are heading down at Texas A&M and is excited to be a part of it. He said he knows that he gets to work with a coach now that was a defensive coordinator previously at Texas A&M, worked with safeties, which is an exciting aspect for him. And so he's really ready to get to work and and and, and said he is all in on Texas A&M and very comfortable in the direction they're going. So I think he's going to have he, – and I think he's going to be able to make an impact potentially on special teams as a young player. But – you know, with 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 A and M bringing in some some veteran pieces in the portal, which we'll touch on in just a second, I think that gives him the opportunity to develop at the rate that he needs to, and be a guy that can maybe maybe see limited action as a freshman, contribute in in certain situations, work on some of those things. Like I said, his back pedals, is coming out of breaks, and and really refine his technique because the the big thing that was brought up about him, and and something I noticed as well right off the bat, he is really long, really athletic and has mentioned that the staff really likes his versatility to maybe play in a couple different spots. You know, we know Mike Elko really likes long athletic corners and mentioned they've mentioned to him potentially even seeing time at corners. So really versatile guy that I think can, can also make an impact as he kind of gets on campus and develops for a couple years and, and is entering Texas A&M with the right mindset. Speaking of the transfer portal, we're going to touch on that in just a few minutes after a quick break. Boy, has Texas A&M been active on that front landing some big 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 targets this week beating out some high major programs and we'll we'll certainly touch on on that right after a quick break Welcome back into the Gigam 24 7 Sports Podcast. I am Andrew Hattersley. Boy, has Mike Elko been off on a tear to start the new year and the transfer portal. AM we knew was going to be aggressive in the transfer portal after signing 14 players during the early signing period. They still have a commitment from Terry Bussey as they look to hold off other contenders heading into the uh, second signing day. And But oh boy, when you look at what they're doing in the transfer portal, it's hard not to be excited about what Texas A&M is doing, and and that excitement was certainly evident earlier this week when A&M was able to keep former Brian standout Nick Scourton home, beat out Florida State, Missouri, and Oklahoma for him, the top ranked portal edge rusher in the in the cycle to this point. Led the Big Ten in sacks last season with ten, playing for Purdue, and is now coming back home. Great job by Texas A&M on this, on this one to start out with. Obviously, Texas A&M getting the first visit earlier this week as he was supposed to go from Texas A&M to Florida State to Missouri to Oklahoma. Well, he never took the Florida State, Missouri, and Oklahoma visits because after they returned from their first day at Texas A&M, you know, I had people around the, fam- around the family tell me that the visit went great. And they were, you know, they weren't sure what was going to happen with the other visits at that at that point. And and there was no kind of word if they were going to make it to Florida State the next day. Well, word started to get out the next morning that they were not, in fact, going to go on that Florida State visit and instead going to stay around and, and spend another day at Texas A&M. Got to give a shout out to 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 R.C. Slocum, who spent some time around Scourton, was able to talk to him as well and and really uh you know, provide another resource for the for the family who's who's obviously going to get to you know come to a lot of games at Kyle Field now and and see Nick close to home and and for for Texas A and M and it was a really really big land obviously to keep keep him back home. He's a top ten player in the transfer portal. Just a huge victory for Mike Elko, Spencer, Sean Spencer, and and the rest of that A and M defensive staff but they have they have not been done on 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 that front and we'll get to that in just a second from the safety standpoint they've really done some nice things but with the addition of Scarleton you've obviously got him you've got DJ Hicks you've got Gabriel Brownlow Dindy 
waiting on a decision from Shamar Turner, but there's some indications that he's leaning towards coming back from what our Carter Carls has said over at Gigum 24 seven. And that would be another big addition to that defense. And, and if you can line up those, those guys along the line of scrimmage, a has got a chance to have a really, really good pass rush next season. And, and, you know, Skyrton obviously comes with multiple years of eligibility left and just a guy you felt like A&M needed to get the job done. And, and, you know, Florida State was certainly aggressive in there. And but but the sentiment I kept getting when talking to folks is AM just makes so much sense. It's close to home. It's a chance for him to come home and play with his close to his family. There's an opportunity to obviously make an impact right away, be a part of this turnaround with Mike Elko and and make an impact on that front. So just a really good fit all around. But as we've seen before, things are not done in the transfer portal until they're done and so while he while he grew up just down the road from brian from from texas a&m you still got to be able to get it done you've still got to be able to close the door and and a&m was able to do that without letting him even go on any other visits so a really good job there and a really one of the biggest wins so far for mike elko when you look at what they did with solomon williams as well during the early signing period being able to beat out alabama for him hold on to dale and evans things are looking Really nice on on that front, but as I said, they have been far from done. Because later in the day, as I actually walked in the door, coming back from San Antonio from All American Bowl practices, word comes out that A and M has flipped UCLA commit transfer commit Marcus Ratcliffe and adding another piece to that secondary. He was at San Diego State, a really, really good first year at, at San Diego State, had been committed to UCLA, then got the AM offer, decided to set up the AM visit, and was going to kind of make up his mind after this visit. Well, he did exactly that and adds a a big piece to the secondary. And and, and I think there's a couple aspects to this, right? The One of the first aspects is he comes with multiple years of eligibility remaining. As we've seen, that's, that's really important. They've obviously the one-time... Transfer rule is kind of out the door, but at this point, you get him on campus for multiple years. You can grow and develop him. Gives you some some stability at that position with a guy that that has multiple years remaining. And, and clearly, Mike Elko has a plan on that front. When you look at Bryce Anderson, Jacoby Matthews, now Dalton Brooks, now Mar- Marcus Radcliffe, Dericky Wright, Trey Jones, they've really looked to add to that safety room and build depth. You've got Jared Kerr as well. There's a ton of depth in that room now that you can that you can feel really good about. And then on Friday morning, uh, they add Radcliffe's h- h- former high school teammate Donovan Saunders, who was committed to TCU, flipped his commitment to Texas A&M, and he joins Will Lee, giving A&M two corners. And I don't think they're done on that front either. I think corner is going to be one of the interesting positions to watch over the next week as A&M looks to still add to that room heading into the spring semester but another clear need right you look at what happened in the bowl game obviously AM was without a couple of guys there but you know you bring back braven rogers you bring back javen thomas now you add will lee you add to the mix donovan saunders now you feel like you have some options there you've got terry bussey committed a&m's been recruiting him as a cornerback you feel like he might be able to come in based on the feedback We've gotten of, of how he's performed, obviously, at the All-Star Games. You look at the tremendous seasons he put together on the high school level. You feel like he'll be able to come in and make an impact on that front. And and like I said, we've got the full list over at Gigum 24-7. But a and still has multiple other cornerback targets out on the board there. You look at Bobby Taylor. He's now entering his third year in Aggieland. If, if you know, you hope he starts to be ready to make an impact as well. And, you, and you've got another piece there, but after losing Tyree Chappelle, after losing Deuce Harmon, after losing Josh DeBerry, you, you, and Tony Grimes, you, and Tony Grimes obviously didn't play this last year, but a, but a guy that they were open was going to be able to make an impact when he arrived last off season. You've got Sam McCall as well, who played uh, and you, and you hope kind of in that second year in the program is able to kind of stay, take a step forward as well. You start to feel better about the way that room looks as well. As you kind of take a look forward down the road, A&M's done a nice job in the receive on the receiver front. They've really, they've really a- addressed some key areas of need sitting with the number three transfer portal class in the country right now behind only Ole Miss and Colorado, who have also been really, really aggressive looking to add positions. 
You look at the they've still got some needs on on both sides of the ball. Receiver, like I mentioned, they they can still add to that room. Running back is is an area they're still targeting. They're going to have multiple on campus this weekend, looking to maybe close on one or two of those. Offensive line, they've got some targets coming in, and and I and I think they're trending in the right direction on that front as well. You add an edge rusher potentially, you add a linebacker to this room. They've had some guys on campus there as well, and you start to really like what Texas A&M is doing. They're still potentially looking to add another tight end. A Brady Hunt is a name to watch there. They're currently committed to South Carolina, former Ball State tight end. Worked was recruited to Ball State by Patrick Doherty, so that's the connection there. And a guy that that A&M is is certainly right in the mix for as 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 we head into. The weekend and and with the spring semester coming, you're going to see a lot of guys look to make decisions over the next week or so and try to get enrolled in classes for the spring semester, be able to take part in spring ball. So you're definitely going to want to be staying locked into Gigum 24/7. We've got updates over there on 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 targets to know and 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 uh, more to come certainly on that front because I don't think Mike Elko and and that staff are done by any means over the next couple of days. So they are continuing to be extremely active. And a, and a really a fun start to the new year when you look at some of what Texas A&M has been able to accomplish. This sets the groundwork going forward for for what they're going to try to do in their first year. So big thank you to those who have joined us and watched and tuned in for this. I hope everyone's had a really good start to the new year. I'm sure with the news of Nick Skyrton, that for a lot of A&M fans, that is certainly the case. But again, if you like these videos, be sure to hit the like and share button and subscribe. To the channel to get a notification every time a new video drops same goes for spotify and itunes be sure to give us a five-star review and hit subscribe there as well to get a notification every time a new podcast drops until then we'll see you guys soon where uh we got like i said we got more coming on over at gigam 24 7 so you will definitely be, want to stay locked in over there and thanks to everyone for joining and have a great weekend